So we have a measurement to give us some indication, some feedback of relative breathing volume. It's called a control pause. It was developed by Dr. Konstantin Buteyko. It's a very simple measurement and it's literally the length of time that you can hold your breath for comfortably following an exhalation. So the instructions are, you take a small gentle breath in through your nose, a small silent breath out through your nose, you pinch your nose with your fingers to hold your breath, and you time it in seconds until you feel the first distinct urge to breathe or the first definite desire to breathe. And at that point, you release your nose, you breathe through your nose, and your breath at the end should be calm. So the control pause is the length of time that you can hold your breath for comfortably. It's not a breath hold, you know, holding your breath for as long as possible, because if you hold your breath for as long as possible, that's going to be influenced by willpower and determination. So instead, a comfortable breath hold time, you're holding your breath until your body tells you to resume breathing. It's only until the first stress, the first signals, the first definite desire to breathe, or the first involuntary movement of your breathing muscles. So basically, you take a small breath in, small breath out, you pinch your nose, you hold your breath until you receive the first stress, the first sign of your body to take a breath. That's your control pause. And looking through the literature, in 2009, Nishino, which is a ja who is a Japanese researcher, he said that breath holding is one of the most powerful methods to induce the sensation of breathlessness and that the breath hold test gives us much information on the onset and endurance of dyspnea or breathlessness. So in terms of, say, for example, somebody doing physical exercise, if they've got a low breath hold time, they're going to be far more breathless during physical exercise, so their tolerance to physical exercise is low. Um, somebody who's singing needs a high breath hold time because they need to be able to hold a note for a longer period of time. Somebody who's talking needs a high breath hold time because if we have a low breath hold time, we're constantly fighting for air. And the best way to think of this is, think of somebody, say, with severe asthma. You know, you see the person with severe asthma, you notice they're breathing, um, and if you were to ask them to measure their breath, they'll probably hold their breath for about five to 10 seconds. Then if you were start to start talking to the person, you'll notice that they'll run out of air quite quickly. They're not able to hold um, the sentence for a period of time because you know they've developed the habit of breathing too much and talking is disrupting their breathing. In this study here, they looked at the effect of, or the relationship between breath hold time and cystic fibrosis. So 18 patients with varying stages of cystic fibrosis were studied to determine the value of the breath hold time as an index of exercise tolerance. And it found that the voluntary breath hold time might be a useful index for the prediction of the exercise tolerance of cystic fibrosis patients. In other words, if you have an individual with a breath hold time, a comfortable breath hold time of five seconds, you know they're going to get very breathless during physical exercise. Ideally, and if I look at a book by William McArdle, um, Exercise Physiology book, he states that an athlete, when they exhale, they should be able to hold their breath for up to 40 seconds before they resume breathing again. Because high breath hold time means reduced breathlessness, both during rest and also during physical exercise. You've got better control over your breathing. In this paper here, they looked at it with the rating the usefulness of breath hold time um, for acute asthma. And they found that breath hold time varies inversely with the magnitude of breathlessness when it is present at rest. So an individual who's got very calm, quiet breathing, um, you will expect them to have a longer breath hold time. And conversely, somebody with acute asthma, like in this paper here, the more symptoms they have, you know, they're constantly fighting for breath, their breath hold time is going to be very, very low.